Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today our goal is to talk about how to prepare for and have a great test experience. Now I do say that tongue in cheek about having a great test experience because typically it is a rather painful experience to go uh, regurgitate all the knowledge that you've accumulated over the last three years and then walk out the test center and wonder what happened or wonder what happened on that question or this question. So I want to talk about how to make your test day as successful as possible. But before we get to that, just a reminder about our free brain dump session that'll be on July 24th at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can register for that over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast and then check out ptfinalexam.com for all of your NPTE test prep needs. We've got everything from Crash Course, which is just a very brief review of the big systems, all the way through to our VIP course, which includes pretty much everything you need on test day. We've got a bunch of practice exams, written material, you name it, we've got it over at ptfinalexam.com. So today I wanted to talk about how to make your test day performance the best possible. So we're gonna talk through some of the things that ostensibly you probably know most of these things, but it's good sometimes to review and think through what test day will be like because the the truth of the matter is that anxiety builds when we are out of control. And so if you are out of control with your test preparation, you're out of control on test day, it tends to lead to an increase in anxiety. So my goal is to try to bring down that anxiety as much as possible by helping you be in control of everything about the test day experience. So the biggest thing to remember is that you need to prepare, prepare, prepare. So what does that mean? Preparing means that you have considered each of, we're, we'll go through a bunch of items. I've got six or seven here. We'll go through each of these items, talk about things that you can prepare to make your test day as stress less as possible. Rather than stressful, it'd be stressless. There will be stress on test day. I mean, you just plan on it. But the goal here is to try to reduce that as much as possible. So first thing, let's just talk about what you're going to eat, drink, and wear. So it is, I mean, they will let you in the test center if you're wearing sweatpants and pajamas. Uh, frankly, there's not a dress code in that sense. However, I do recommend that you dress for success. And so as PTs, we are, we are very good at this where we tend to dress professionally, but also very comfortably. So I would encourage you to lean into that. Try to look the part of a PT when you go in to take your test. Now, again, this is a willism. You can do as you wish, but I do suggest that you look nice. Try to try to beat your best like you would be going to, say, your first day on the clinic, which, you know, as PTs, we, we love to have comfortable footwear, comfortable legwear, comfortable shirts, but still be professional. So like a polo, something that tends to look good, but also is very, very functional. So that's, I feel like we've got that down as PTs to have that, that uh, fabulous look, but still be very functional. So consider that. Other things to consider would be what you eat and drink. And what I mean by that is that you probably want to have a decent breakfast of some kind. So if you're testing in the morning, try to eat something that will keep your brain going for longer. So this is something that obviously you'll be doing by you have probably you probably have a good idea of what a good meal looks like for you. So if you don't want like a heavy duty meal, maybe do something lighter. I mean, find what works for you. I do know that if you try to switch it up the day of the test, that it will be, it, it won't be ideal. So for instance, let's say that you're used to having a light breakfast, piece of toast and some uh, glass of milk or something like that. That's just a very simple, straightforward breakfast. But then on test day, you decide to go to the, the Denny's all-you-can-eat buffet and you just gorge on bacon or something. Like you can see how that could go poorly for you. Goal being that you need to identify what it is that you thrive on and then lean into that. Other things, considering what to drink. Now, there is a strong correlation between mental acuity and hydration status. So it is wise to stay hydrated. In the test center itself, they do not permit any beverage vessel to come with you to the desk. And so therefore, you have to be adequately hydrated without having that, that beverage vessel with you at all times. And I think all of us really enjoy having a, that uh, having the, the bottle or the, the beverage vessel, any kind of the cup, whatever, whatever it is you use to... Chances are during PT school, everyone had their little water bottle they put right on, 
on the corner of their desk. And that was just the way they, they rolled all through PT school. Unfortunately, on test day, they don't permit that. And so therefore, you have to stay hydrated, but not overhydrated because you can see there would be, I mean, although chances are on test day, they will ask you about the micturition reflex. You don't want to be experiencing that in real time. And so you need to consider carefully how much caffeine you'll intake. And again, I would just say that you've probably got it figured out thus far, but don't overdose on the caffeine or overhydrate right before the test because you'll have to take an unscheduled break and go hit the bathroom before continuing on through the test. So consider what you'll wear, what you'll eat, what you'll drink. Other things to consider, you need to consider how early you will arrive to the test center. So it is a good thing to be early. Now, that is clearly a good thing. However, you could psych yourself out if you got to the test center, say, I don't know, three hours ahead of time and you just had to sit in the parking lot and stew for a while. That is not ideal. I've had people do that before and they tell me it's not ideal. Uh, when I took the test, I got about got there about 30 to 45 minutes ahead of time because I was worried about finding parking. Uh, parking turned out not to be an issue. And so I was there, ended up being there right when the test center opened. And I got in as one of the first people there. So that's that worked really well for me. Chances are, if you're taking a morning administration, you'll want to get there in adequate time. If you're doing an a afternoon administration, just be careful not to get there way, way, way too early. So arrive early, but not too early. Uh, the other thing about arriving, I have had a few horror stories here. One of them, I had a student who they said they arrived at the Prometric Test Center. They, they went to the front desk and they said, oh, looks like you're a little bit early. Hang tight. We'll call your name as soon as we get this, this cue taken care of. Well, so the, pa the patient, the student went and sat in the, in the waiting room there for a minute, you know, just kind of fidgeted and waited and waited and fidgeted. Well, they didn't say anything. No one, the test center staff forgot about them and the student didn't say anything to the test center staff. And so that, that student stayed there. I think it was close to two hours just waiting, 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 waiting. And then finally they went up the desk and say, hey, I'm waiting for you to call me. Did you, is that still on the list? Like, oh, we totally forgot. We thought you were a no-show. You should have been here an hour ago. And it was, it was a total disaster. So arrive early. Don't just sit and wait in the waiting room forever. You want to communicate nicely with the test center staff so that you don't get lost in the shuffle because... Uh, frankly speaking, they have a lot on their plate and they don't care about this as much as you do. So be sure to take good care of yourself in that way on test day. Also of note, you'll need to bring proper documentation with you. There, there are some things to bring with you and some things just to leave home. So what you need to bring with you is proper identification. So you, have, you do have to have two forms of ID. This is according to the latest uh, FSBPT and Prometric update that you have to have a current valid government issued photograph ID. So this is like a driver's license. You have to have a driver's license, passport, state identification card. And so that type of a thing is, it has to be a government issued photographic ID. Again, passport, driver's license. Those are the classic forms of this. Things that don't work, like your social security card does not work because it doesn't have your photograph on it. So these are your primary IDs. You need a driver's license or a passport or some type of state ID card with photographs. Then some type of secondary ID card. This is typically a credit card of some kind. It could be a credit card or a debit card, but also your school ID. If you've got a school ID card, something with your printed name on it, that will, it has to be current and valid and have your printed name on it. So a current credit card, a current student ID, something that is, is current and printed that will work as your secondary ID. So you have to bring two forms of ID, primary with a photograph, secondary just has to have your printed name and be, be current or up to date. So bring your ID, the things not to bring with you, don't worry about bringing your study material with you. So don't, don't bring a, a study or, or review guide and don't bring, it's not gonna do you any good, it'll just stress you out. Now, when I took the OCS exam, it was a very similar experience when you take the orthopedic, orthopedic certification specialty exam, and really any of the specialty exams, they're all administered by Prometric. Now, I did take my flashcard stack and just left it in the car, just because I had a little bit of a drive, and so I'd pull up a flashcard and take, take a quick glance at it, just re reminding myself of a few things. And then I was there a few minutes early, so I just went through a few more flashcards. Now, it's pretty easy to stress yourself out doing that. And so if you know that you'll, you'll get worried or upset by, by going through that, then just leave them at home. But you don't need to bring them into the test center with you. When you do arrive, they'll assign you a locker where you will be able, and they'll provide that to you. 
You will put your cell phone, you'll put your keys, your food, your uh, beverage, anything that you brought with you is got to be stashed in the locker. Uh, other things you may consider bringing would be foam earplugs. They do permit the small foam earplugs, you know, just the little the little plugs <laughs> that are made of, of that memory foam. Uh, they do permit that. However, they do have to check them and it's best if they're in their original packaging, although it's not absolutely required. And then in the test center, they do provide to you the, the it's a type of construction headphone. So it's a, we'll call it, for lack of a better term, a dumb headphone, meaning that it's not active noise canceling. It's simply just a a noise muffling, uh, noise muffling headphone. Although um, I did not use them, but reports are that they are not terribly functional. So if you really are concerned about noise, you'll need to bring your own foam earplugs. Use those plus the construction type headphones that they'll give you as well. All right, so other things to prepare. So we've talked about some of the mechanics of test day and preparation. Now I want to talk for a minute about how to prepare for some of the other things that'll happen on test day, including the certainty, I can say 100% 100 certainty that you will find a question that you find challenging or that is totally out of left field and you have no idea what the answer is. So what will you do when you certainly find a question that you don't know the answer to? So there are a couple of options. I mean, certainly there's the fight or flight. There's the, the anger that can occur. There's the fear that can occur and anxiety when you find that tough question. I would encourage you to, as healthily as possible, respond to those tough questions. Just know that they're coming and recognize that although maybe I don't know the answer to this one, I do know the answer to lots of them. And so you are, you're gearing yourself up for success by preparing that thought process. And that, that comes into the next item I wanted to talk about is how to stay calm. Consider how will you bring your heart rate back down if you do find a question or you do find yourself a little strapped for time, how will you calm yourself down so that you can stay 100% focused? So usually this involves uh, like a 20 second mini mental break. I talk about this in my classes all the time. That mini mental break is where you rest your eyes, maybe look at a far wall or close your eyes for about 20 seconds. Just something to bring yourself and recenter yourself to what you're doing. Try to be as calm as you can so that when you answer questions, you're doing so at your peak or at your very, very best. And then that relates to the last thing I wanted to talk about here, which is how to stay on pace. You need to prepare how to stay on pace. So generally speaking, you'll have about one hour per section. So that's about one hour per 50 questions. Uh, those of you listening to this in the future in 2024, uh, there will be a, a slight change in the number of questions, but it'll still still be one hour per section. The goal is that you'll need to finish about 50 questions in one hour. So one section per hour, or you could do a half section in a half hour. So that's how you'll stay on pace. Rather than stare at the clock and wonder, has a minute gone by, has a minute and a half gone by? Don't worry so much about that, but look at the bigger chunks, meaning a half section, half hour, full section, full hour. And as you do that, you'll find that you are, you are on pace to finish in time. Now, let's say you get to the very end of the test and you've got 10 questions left, but only one minute left. You've poorly managed your time, but you still have a, a, about a minute left. You should absolutely click some type of answer on every question because a blank question is totally unscored and obviously will not help you at all. So you've got to have something down, at least put put anything down so that you have at least a small, a 25% chance of getting it correct. So that being said, the best thing to do is to stay on track so that you can finish in time, which would be less than one hour per section for that five hour total time. So that's a few things to prepare. You're going to prepare what you'll eat, drink, and wear, when and how you'll arrive, your identification, so the two forms of ID, one with a photograph and one without. Uh, you'll respond, consider how you will respond to tough questions, how to stay calm, and then how to stay on pace so that you finish in an appropriate amount of time. So that's a bunch of things to help you with test day itself. And we will talk about this a bunch in our brain dump session. Again, that's July 24th at 3 p.m. That's totally free. The recording will be posted to our crash course and VIP courses. So if you're a part of that, uh, you'll be able to join or be able to access the recording afterward. Otherwise, join us live. I think you'll really enjoy it as we talk about some of the fun acronyms and mnemonics that you can put on your brain dump, things to help you remember things for test day. I think you'll really enjoy that. 
All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. If you haven't yet, it only takes a moment. Just head down on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this. Just scroll down and give us a five-star review. It takes just a moment and we'd sure appreciate it. Uh, be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we have. You can also find these episodes over on YouTube if you want to see rather than just listen. Again, those of you who are, are driving or running, you should probably just keep listening. But uh, th those of you who are sitting, maybe you could consider watching along if you'd like to see the question rather than just hear it. Uh, we've got tons of practice questions in all these podcast episodes, so be, so be sure to check those out. And in the meantime, uh, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for any of your NPT preparation needs. Will Crane fist pumps all around. Thanks, everyone. I'll catch you in the next episode.